Hello, my name is Michael, and this is part four of the MeanStack RESTful API tutorial. In part three, we downloaded, installed, and learned how to use MongoDB for the first time, and we created three contacts in a contactless database. Now, in this video, we're going to learn how to interact with our MongoDB database, which is really exciting. In this video, we're going to learn how to do get and post requests, and in part five, we're going to learn how to do delete and put requests. So let's get started now. Step number 27. We're going to use NPM to install MongoJS. And this is the really exciting part. Uh, not that what we've done so far hasn't been exciting. We've already come a long way. But now we're actually going to use our server to interact with our MongoDB database, which is basically the RESTful API part of this tutorial. To do this, we're going to use an NPM package called MongoJS. There are several options out there, but I'm going to use MongoJS simply because it's the one that I learned with. So first, let's close our server with Control C, and then making sure that we're still in our contact list app folder. Let's type npm install mongo mongo.js, and this will install mongo.js into the folder. And now, uh, if we just look over here, we should now see um, mongo. Oh, after it installs mongo.js in our folder here, so that means that we've correctly installed it. There are some error messages there, but um, that won't affect what we do. Uh, step number 28, we're going to require mongo.js in our server.js file. So at the top of our server.js file, let's type in here at the top, var mongo.js equals require, uh, quotation mark, mongo.js, and I'll add a semicolon at the end there. And let's also type at the bottom here, right underneath there, var db equals mongo.js uh, parentheses quotation mark contact list and then in square brackets contact list um, and then we'll close that with semicolon there and so basically the first line requires the mongo.js module and the second line says which mongodb database and collection we're going to be using uh, step number 29 we're going to now get our data from MongoDB with a get request. So first, let's um, delete the dummy data in our server file, because we won't need that anymore. So let's just delete that right there. And now, let's have our server find the data from our contactless database and collection. To do this, we're going to type right underneath the console log message this code right here. So let's type in db dot contact list dot find uh, function error docs docs will mean that it's going to respond with the documents from the database or the contacts from the database and right here let's just type um, console dot log parentheses docs and then underneath there let's type um, respond rest dot json Docs. So the console log is a test to make sure that we receive the data from the database, and the response.json sends the data back to the controller. So now let's just test our code by restarting our server and then refreshing our browser. So let's do um, control C. Oh, I already did that. Um, so node server, node server, and I'm going to actually pull up the browser next to us so we can actually see what's going on. I'm going to refresh the browser now, and now we can see here that we have received the data from the database. We can see Tom, Tracy, and Tucker, which were our three new entries. And then in the command prompt, we can actually see that they uh, were printed to the command prompt by the console log message. So we see the ID, name, email number here. So that is pretty cool. So now we've successfully made a GET request to retrieve data from our MongoDB database. Uh, super exciting. Step number 30, we're going to now prepare our index.html file layout to post data to our contact list app. So we want to be able to put new contacts into our uh, table and app. So let's first go back to our index.html file and add some input boxes and an add contact button. So first, let's add another table header called action by adding this code right here. This will be the column where our button is going to be in. So let's go to our uh, index.html file. And so underneath uh, the number, let's just type th this one will be action. It's just basically clicking the button to do something. And next, let's add input boxes for each category. 
and an add contact button by adding this code just above the existing table row um, in the T body section of our table. So we're going to make a new row right here, which is going to include our um, input boxes and button. So let's add in a TR, enter, enter, and then we're going to have a TD, um, and it's going to have an input a class. This is going to add some uh, bootstrap formatting. We'll uh, have, a, have class form-control. It's not necessary, but it'll make it look nicer. ng model equals um, contact dot name. So this will be the name input box, and this um, ng model will connect it to the controller, and then slash td. Underneath there, we'll do the same thing for the other three, other two categories. So td, this one will be input class equals form control ng model equals contact dot email and we're going to have a third one here it'll be input class equals form control ng model equals contact dot number Okay, so now we want to add a button underneath here. So we're going to have TD, and this one will be button. We're going to have the class, again, this will just apply some styling to it, button btn dash primary. This one will have ng click, which means that we're going to do this function when we click this button. So let's just make this function maybe add contact with parentheses after it. So basically, when this button is clicked, it will call this add contact function. Um, so yeah, the classes form control and button primary basically just add bootstrap styling. Um, and the ng models connect the user's input to our controller. And the ng click creates a function that gets called when the user clicks the add contact button. Oh, I forgot to add the add contact. So it's going to have add contact as the text. And then I'm going to close the button tag here. And so now let's refresh our browser and see what this looks like. So now we should see our three input boxes here, and then the add contact button here. And obviously this add contact won't do anything yet because we haven't defined the function yet. Step number 31, we're going to define and test the add contact function. So now we're going to define what the add contact function will do, which is send data from the input boxes to the server to post or add to our MongoDB database. So in our controller.js file, underneath our http.get section, Let's write this code. So right underneath here, it's going to be a new post request. We're going to do um, dollar sign scope dot add contact. This refers to the add contact in the HTML file. Um, it's going to equal function parentheses squiggly bracket semicolon. And the function for now, let's just test it. Let's type in console dot log, and let's just type in. Um, scope.contact. So this is going to send to the console the information that's in the input boxes right here. So now to test this, let's just refresh our browser. I'm pressing F5 here. Let's add a new contact. Um, let's just put in Sally for the name. Sally at test email 4.com. Her number will be 888. Let's press the add contact button. Yay! And now we see um, in our console, we have an object, name Sally, email this. So we've added, um, so the function is receiving the data from the input boxes here, which um, is great. Now, step number 32. We're going to now send the input data from our boxes to the server and make sure that it's received correctly. So first, in our controller file, underneath the console log, let's type this code. This is going to be our post request dollar sign http dot post parentheses quotation mark slash contact list that's our route and then we're going to put comma this is the data that we're going to send scope dot contact so that's the data that we're sending to the server and so this sends the input data to the server now let's write code to have our server listen for this post request so uh, in our server file underneath the get request there or the get code there we're going to type in app.post, 
parentheses uh, slash contact list function request response squiggly bracket and then uh, semicolon there and we're going to just write console dot log request dot body this code isn't going to work yet uh, let me just explain what we just did here the app dot post listens for the post request from the controller and the console log will print the data it receives to the command prompt but this code won't work yet because the request slash body means that we're actually requesting the data from the body of the input data and our server doesn't know how to parse the body yet to teach our server how to parse the body of the input we need to first install another module called body parser so let's go to our command prompt close the server and then type in npm install body parser like this will control c let's type in npm install body dash parser and so that will install right there And now we're going to require the body parser module in our server.js file by typing this code uh, near the top, just at the bottom of the var uh, lines there. Let's type in uh, var body parser, capital P, uh, equals require, parentheses, quotation mark, body parser, semicolon. And then underneath there, um, underneath the app.use thing here let's just type another app that uses it'll be this time it'll be app dot use body parser dot json parentheses semicolon so now our server can parse the body of the input that it receives so now let's test our code by restarting our server refreshing our browser entering some new data into the input boxes and then clicking the add contact button so let's try that right now um, Let's restart our server, or it's already restarted, so let's type in node server. And then, then let's, um, I'm gonna pull it up right here so we can see um, what's going on there. So let's type in the same, uh, let's refresh the browser first. Let's type in that same data, sally, sally at test email 4.com, number 888, 888, 8888. Let's press add contact. And great, so we see both the um, objects show up in the console in the browser and now in the console log which means that we are correctly parsing the input and the server can now read the data. Step number 33. We're going to now insert the input data into the MongoDB database. So now we want to be able to insert the data that the user inputs into the MongoDB database. To do this, let's write this code underneath the console log line. So let's go back to our server.js and then right underneath this console log line let's type this code right here we're going to type in db.contactlist.insert that's the code for inserting um, a new item we're going to insert the body so the request body so what we received and what we parsed and then we're going to function error doc doc represents the um, item that we uh, parsed and received and we're going to respond with the JSON format of this doc right there. So we're going to send back this data to our controller. Uh, this code both inserts the input data into the database as well as sends the new data from the database back to the controller. Step number 34, we're going to test to make sure uh, that the controller receives the new data from the database. To do this, let's add this code to our controller file at the end of the HTTP.POST request. Uh, Let's type in here at the end here, uh, period or dot success function response. So that's going to take the response from the server as the argument um, and then put semicolon at the end there. We're going to respond with console log response. So that should print the response uh, that it receives to the console log. So now let's test our code by Restarting our server, control C, node server. Let's refresh our browser, F5. And then let's type in the same data again. Sally, sally at test email 4.com, 888, 888, 8888. And then we're gonna click add contact. So now we see that we have received the data from the server. Now you can see that there's an additional ID tag, which is the ID 
that uh, MongoDB has attached to our object, which means that we have successfully retrieved uh, the data or inserted the data into our MongoDB database. But there seems to be a problem. Where is Sally in our table? She hasn't shown up yet. Um, and the answer is if we refresh our browser again, she will now show up in the table. So the problem with our code right now is that when we click Add Contact, it doesn't automatically refresh the page to include our new added contact. So now we want this data to show up right when we click the Add Contact button. So step number 34, we're now going to automatically refresh the contact list when the Add Contact button is clicked. To do this, we're going to create a new function called Refresh, which when called, will perform a new GET request for all of our contact list data in the MongoDB database. So back in our controller.js file, let's first surround our current http.get request with this new function. So let's type, uh, so we're gonna take this http get, we're gonna surround it with the refresh um, function, which means that we can call, we can refresh the server, or refresh the page with this function. So let's type in uh, var refresh equals function, parentheses, we're gonna surround this with brackets like that. And let's just indent this over. And now underneath here, we're gonna type scope.contact equals uh, just quotation marks. There. That'll clear our input boxes after we call the refresh function. And then underneath there, let's type, um, let's just call the function so that it'll uh, get the data right when we load the page. And then next, let's call this refresh button at the end of our add contact function to immediately refresh the page after we click the add contact button. So at the end here, uh, let's type in uh, refresh parentheses semicolon. So now let's test our code by restarting our server, refreshing our browser, entering some new data. Um, this time we'll make the name uh, so node server. Let's uh, refresh the page. This time we'll name our new contact uh, Sam. He'll be, he'll be Sam at testemail5.com. His number will be 999999999. Let's click Add button to test it. And now we see Sam immediately show up in our table without having to refresh the page. That is pretty cool. But now, what if I want to remove data from the contact list? I can't do that yet. I'm just going to keep on adding, 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 and I can't take away any. So that's what we're going to do next. Uh, we're going to end here for this video, so make sure you check out the fifth and final video to learn how to delete and edit contacts in our list, and that'll be uh, yet more excitement in our RESTful API tutorial. So thanks for watching, and I will see you there. Yeah.